that immediately, I posted that, and that immediately caused negative reaction from Clemson fans. I did not understand why Clemson fans would go out there and say, oh, we're not going to get him. Oh, Miami's already got him. Oh, C.J. Spiller's asleep at the wheel. Oh, Clemson's losing track. Clemson's out of touch. Clemson's waiting too long. I want to pump the brakes on all of that. My first thing is this. You already know if you're a Clemson fan, you already know their philosophy and how they limit the offers that are out there. Now, I know that it drives us nuts. It drives me nuts at times. It drives Houston nuts at times. It drives Allen nuts at times. But the fact of the matter is that's their philosophy. By the way, has the philosophy not worked? Yes, it has worked. Have they had top 10 recruiting classes consistently? Yes. Have they won national championships? Yes. Are they currently in a top 10 recruiting class? Yes. So their philosophy works. Now, does it rub everybody the right way or wrong way? Now, some people, it does rub people the wrong way. Some younger men in the, in the country that maybe are highly regarded recruits, or maybe they're just middle of the road recruits. Sometimes they have come out and said, well, you know, I don't like how Clemson waited on the offer. I don't like how they didn't offer me early. My throwback to you is if that matters to you, it never really mattered to you. I posted this on Twitter. If you have a dream job out there, if you have a place where you really want to go, you're going to find a way to go. You're going to save your money and you're going to buy that ticket when you get the opportunity. If somebody pays for your ticket to go to that location, you're going to go there. If you don't really want to go there, you're not going to accept the ticket. You're not going to save your money and buy the ticket. If you really want that job, no matter what job you currently have, if Clemson recruiting office called me today and said, Hey, we're going to give you similar uh, pay scout salary to come over here. I'm out of here. If they told me a little bit of pay cut, I'm out of here. I'm going to do it because I think that would be a job I'd love. Now, I don't know if I'd love it or not, but the idea is this. If you really want to be somewhere, you'll find a way to be somewhere. It doesn't matter if you're offered in January or July. Now, some players out there will say, Oh, well, you know, I don't feel like, I feel like they neglected me. I feel like that, you know, um, they didn't offer me, so they really weren't interested. I don't like how they did that. I think that's a general dis, uh, misunderstanding of how the process works. Here's the thing. Yeah, you get offered by other schools. Let me ask you something. If you're a wide receiver out there, for example, just example, you're a wide receiver out there and somebody offers you, and you're one of 30 players at that same position they offered, is that really any more meaningful? Really? What if you get the offer, and you're one of 30, and you walk up to them and you say, Coach, I want to commit to your school. And what are they going to say to you? Well, you know what, Houston, we've been thinking and we've been looking at the, the roster and we're just not ready for you to commit. Uh, we, you have an offer from us and that's, that's a prestigious thing, but we just can't allow you to commit yet. Schools do that, by the way. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, there was another thing that's out there. It's called the transfer portal and decommitting. People decommit when they get to a place where they really want to go to they find a way to go there. Mm -hmm. People walk on to universities that they really want to be at. Do you really want a player who doesn't really want to be there? Some people say, hey, well, if they would have offered earlier, maybe they would have been more interested. If that's what really mattered, if that was the catalyst, the decision factor, that's pretty shallow to me. So the first thing is, don't get hung up on late offers. First of all, it's Clemson's philosophy. Second of all, if you really want to come to Clemson, it doesn't matter when you get the offer. You're going to take it if you really want to be there. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I think I think Davos harped on this several times is he wants players that want to be there. And so if you're going to be miffed about not getting an offer on your timeline, 
um, then maybe you're not really that interested in going in the first place to Clemson. I think people tend to overreact with when we don't, when I say we as in Clemson fans and we don't see the team and the staff offer the amount that they want to see, that the fans want to see. They want to see a a ton of offers, four to five stars, because they're used to seeing this. But you also got to realize, you know, just because you don't see a ton of offers and just because you don't see a ton of commitments at the position year after year, it doesn't mean that they're not successful in recruiting. I I keep seeing that, well, they're just not having success recruiting uh, right now at wide receiver. And I, I, that's garbage. That's a terrible take. Um, think about what, when, um, when Tyler Grisham took over, right? He took over at the end of the 2019 season. Um, so the class was already kind of done for 2020, but in 2021, he went out and got Troy Stilato. He went and got Dakari Collins and Bo Collins. He pulled those in. Now, some of those guys are still working through like Troy Stilato. We, we still have to sit yet to see, but Bo Collins and, and, and Dakari Collins really showed out and really had to be pushed into roles that, Nobody really expected them to do this year, and, and they did pretty well. You look at this class, this past class in 2022, you look at Adam Randall, who he could come back early and could be a freak. He looks like DK Metcalf in his photos. Antonio Williams. Even Cole Turner's got decent film for what they picked up for someone, if you want to put him in as a slot guy. And then you look at this class. I like Noble Johnson's film a lot. So you have to judge success of – you know, the development of players just because they're not offering a lot of players doesn't mean they don't have a plan. And the same with running backs. They missed on Andrew Paul last year. People were just pulling their shirts off and and weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth that they could not get a running back outside of Keith Adams Jr. last year. Understandable frustration. Maybe the strategy didn't work last year, but that doesn't mean that they don't have an idea going forward. Do you have three running backs that are all very good right now, right? Getting a fourth is kind of tough. You know, recruiting's hard as far as that goes. That's not to say that they don't have a plan this year going forward to get somebody. If you look, they're talking to other people outside of Christopher Johnson. They just are. They do. They're not morons. And I think because you don't see on 247 or Rivals or on 3 or whatever site that you go to, that there's more than enough offers out there, it doesn't mean that they're not talking to people. They're, they're in constant communication with several people at those positions that they're still interested in. If they fill those positions, they'll tell them, hey, we don't have any more spots. That's what happened um, with one of the other positions on defense. Um, <laughs> what happened there? Um, but as far with as another that, position on defense, we won't name. Yeah, you know, we won't name. Okay. So that's going to happen too. But they're more transparent about it. Doesn't mean they're not talking to people doesn't mean they're engaging. They're probably one of the more transparent recruiting groups out there. It's just they, they do it this own way, their own way. And, and once again, I'll also point this out. Fall is when Clemson does a lot of work on the outside positions of the line, like offensive line, defensive line. They try to take care of first of order. Think about how many successful players have come through, um, have come through as far as, uh, Travis Etienne, late pickup. Nobody knew about this guy. He was a, he was a three, four-star guy that Clemson took on a flyer and got. Same with Isaiah Simmons. Same with Antonio Williams. We didn't offer Antonio Williams until the end of the year, and he immediately committed. So just be patient. Recruiting is a, a marathon, not a sprint, even though it seems like it's a sprint to gobble up as much talent. There's still work to be done, and there's still a lot of time to do it. We forget the fact that there's a differentiator in doing what Clemson does versus everybody else. Because to be honest with you, the other solution is to offer more players, and then you're up there in the 100, 150. Where does it stop with offering players? You've got teams out there right now over 250 offers. We all know good and well that a team cannot take 250 offers in one season, in one class. We know that. We know that they can take 25, really not any more than that, maybe a little bit more because of the you know COVID rules and the transfer portal rules and things like that. But you're talking about not even being at 10% of the players that you've offered because you've offered so many. There are schools out there, championship-level schools, 
does it really make that big a difference? And and I keep going back to if it did, the recruiting would suffer. The player, I mean, you've literally got players that have said, well, I didn't pick Clemson. I didn't like that they didn't offer me early. To be honest with you, my true opinion on that is that's a cop-out. You knew where you were going. You had a favorite, and you were going there. You did not not get offered by Clemson. You did not get talked to by Clemson right when you got offered. As Houston mentioned, you were getting talked to by Clemson regularly. They were pursuing you. They were on. You were on their radar. They were talking to you about the opportunities. Some of these guys, a lot of these guys, they they most of the guys that they offer have been at camps, have been at unofficials, have been at officials. It's not like they're completely clueless. There are plenty of guys right now that are 2024 20, guys that have not been offered but have already been to camp. Mm -hmm. and they could be offered in the future, but they haven't yet. There are plenty of those guys out there. Does that mean that they're not talking to him at all? No, that would be dumb if you don't talk to somebody until you offer them, especially with Clemson's philosophy. Now we got, you know, John says, and, and I know, I know not everybody agrees with us on this. John says, you've oversimplified some kids who criticize Clemson for being late are making the point that they got far with another great quote school or team found a mate just as rich and pretty. My thing is this is it's not just as rich and pretty. There was something, a differentiator. There was something different between those two teams. In my opinion, you could say that it, if you say it was just because of the offer and one came in earlier than the other, that's a pretty shallow reason for picking a school over another school. And I don't think it's the real reason. I think there are other reasons like the fit with the coaching staff, your enjoyment of your visit, your family's enjoyment, your mom's enjoyment, your mom's familiarity and familiarity and, and comfort with the staff, your dad's comfort with the staff, with the program, with the academics, so many other factors that actually matter in recruiting. And we're over here like talking about, oh, when they offered mattered. Again, it all goes back to if you really wanted to go to Clemson, you would wait, i.e. Trenton Simpson, Antonio Williams. Antonio Williams. These are guys that are high-level guys that could have went ahead and committed to other places that did went ahead and commit. And keep in mind, who's to say you can't decommit? People decommit from Clemson all the time. Guess what? People decomm decommit from other places and come to Clemson too. It mm -hmm. happens. It happens. If the place you really want to go to offers you, you'll find a way. You'll find a way. All right. So I'm getting off my soapbox here. I know not everybody agrees with us, but, you know, I think that's just our opinion on it. Um, again, I think it's one of the small, minute things that definitely plays a factor in some players. It definitely does. But it should not, if it's, if it's your main factor of choosing one, you know, rich and pretty over another rich and pretty, to me, that's a very shallow reason to choose one over the other. You've, and I don't believe it. I think there is a better reason out there. You just probably don't want to say it. You'd rather say, well, Clemson didn't offer me early. Or you'd rather do out something something ridiculous like that guy from Auburn that said, I chose Auburn because Clemson didn't have a Chick-fil-A. I mean, that's on the level of ridiculousness. Because, by the way, Ch Clemson did have a Chick-fil-A. He just didn't know that. I, I can tell you his name. I just don't, I don't want to call him out. I don't want to call him out. 